How to lower a very high LDL in five ways. Ano ang usually sinasuggest ko to my patients? I've discussed in many videos kung bakit hindi tayo kailangan matakot sa LDL that is slightly higher than normal. However, if it's already times five, times six, times seven than normal, then maybe hindi rin ito ganon ka ganda. This is because kapag ang ating katawan ay merong mataas na LDL na sobrang taas, and hindi natin nakokontrol everything in our life na baka magkaroon tayo ng any stressful event that can elicit inflammation, then that can be a recipe for disaster. Hindi natin yan hinihingi. But of course, we have to also be cautious na as much as hindi tayo takot sa medyong mataas na LDL, but if it's already too high na LDL, hindi rin ito nagkakaroon ng added benefit. So just enough lang. I know ako yung nagsabi sa inyo na hindi ako takot kumain ng taba and I still am not afraid of eating fats. But of course, ayaw din natin na sobra-sobra. Everything too much is not okay. Lahat ng sobra ay meron niyang katumbas na danger. So, since I'll be very busy na hindi ko na ma-accommodate lahat in my telemedicine consultation and my face-to-face -face consultations and online consultations, I am making this video for those of you na hindi na natin accommodate but are worried still about their LDL, especially like, like yung patient natin bago lang lumabas na pinagalitan ng kanyang cardiologist and ng kanilang other doctors as well as their families kasi nga yung LDL nila ay sobrang taas. And when I ask kung ano yung kanyang ginagawa, sobrang taas ng kanyang fat intake. Kumakain ng bulalo, kumakain ng chicharon, and then lahat ng itlog, unlimited din, and using coconut oil na hindi mga halos nagsasabaw na sa kinakain, and also taking in coconut oil as supplements pa. So, those uh, intake of fats may already be quite too much. So, didiscuss natin kung ano yung limang ways that you can do while staying low-carb to lower your LDL. At least, at least a little. Uh, hindi naman yung times 3, times 4, times 5 than normal. And for those of you who want to compute for their lipid profile, meron tayong video na available yesterday on lipid profile and how to analyze it. I want you to check that out so that you will understand kung kailan tayo dapat na hindi rin magpanic. But this video is a supplement on how to lower your very high LDL in five ways. And of course, number one, you can still stay low carb. So stick pa rin tayo sa ating safe list, okay? So mostly just the vegetables and ulam, yun lang. But this time, meron tayong addition. And that is low carb, pero yung proteins ay nasa moderate to high. So moderate to high proteins is important, especially for general public, Especially na wala namang uh, problems with kidneys na hindi kailangan control yung protein intake or those na merong certain cancers that may be responding na medyo mas lumalaki with higher protein intake. But generally, kung wala kayong ganong concerns, you can just safely go on low carb, moderate to high protein intake. Damihan yung protein intake, it can improve your cholesterol profile and can lower down your LDL because you will not be producing too much of it. Kasi nga, hindi niya kayo kakain ng uh, sobra-sobrang calories cut coming from fats, but now more on proteins yung source natin of ating calories. And number two, we can still take, but at least lower your saturated fat intake. If kayo ay mataas yung inyong uh, LDL, try to see kung alin dito yung sobrang nakakain ninyo low carb maybe you're eating mga uh, all of those mga milk tea mga fraps and mga desserts those are high fat and highly inflammatory but the first rule again remind you low carb muna so safe list na low carb and then moderate to high proteins and this time when you take fats hindi rin dapat sobrang dami when it comes to these saturated fats because these are exogenous sources. Hindi nagagawa yung, aside from ginagawang LDL ng katawan natin, it will come also having so much coming from these foods. So alin dito yung maraming nakakain ninyo? Yung mga creams, all-purpose creams, heavy creams, all of those. Dairy creams or even non-dairy. The non-dairy type are actually quite 
dangerous then because those are synthetic kind. So mostly mga trans fat yan, mga galing sa vegetable fats na ginawa nilang into cream. So those are the ones that are very dangerous. So avoid creams, avoid cheeses, cheeses and dairies in general, beef, pork, and even coconut oil. I know these are healthy fats. These are natural fats. Pero yung goal natin ngayon muna ay pababain yung ating very, very high LDL. The moment we lower it, at least somewhat normal or or kahit a little higher than normal lang, but hindi lang times five ng normal, maybe we can add this back a little. So, at least avoid lang muna. Like say, for example, kung bibili kayo ng, ng beef, piliin nyo yung more lean. Hindi yung kailangan na uh, kumuha pa kayo ng additional beef fats for that one. So, I'm not uh, contradicting my previous na mga discussion about fats, that I am not afraid of fats, but for the sake of getting that sweet spot na hindi natin kailangan sobrang pataasin yung LDL natin para wala tayong recipe for any disaster, we are going to moderate our intake of saturated fat. So kung kakain ng baboy, hindi talaga yan magiging completely low fat. Hindi talaga yan magiging completely walang saturated fat. So, but at least, hindi na kayo muna pipili na belly, or kung kakain kayo ng pork chop, hindi nyo kailangan ubusin lahat ng taba, or unahin kainan lahat ng taba. Hindi nyo kailangan kunin lahat ng taba na excess ng pamilya ninyo at ikaw yung uubos. So you have to be to be somewhat cautious, somewhat aware na hindi pang unlimited yung ating fat intake. So decrease saturated fat. So kung tayo ay maglo-low carb and then moderate to high protein at i-decrease natin yung ating saturated fat, so saan tayo kukuha ng ating extra calories that we need and also kukuha ng pang-energy natin. So we will get our fats from healthy unsaturated fat. So ano yung healthy not healthy unsaturated fat. So, kailangan muna avoid tayo ng mga vegetable oil because yung mga vegetable oils, yung mga canola oil, those are also unsaturated fats but they are not the healthiest kinds because hindi sila naturally made and also they are very high in omega-6 na it can be inflammatory and these uh, these are also embedded with trans fats. So yung mga trans fats na yan, yun yung na, na magiging madaling oxidize and that can actually lead into inflammation sa ating bloodstream. So still stay. So ano yung healthy unsaturated fats? We have avocado. So avocado is in season ngayon at kung hindi man in season, meron lang available yan. You can preserve it. You ang isi na suggest natin when you store avocado so bumili kayo ng batch malaking batch para meron kayong ma-reserve and kung gusto niyo mag-store for uh non non avocado season pwede siyang ilagay sa freezer. So, pwede nyo tanggalin, kukunin nyo sa shell, and then ilalagay nyo sa maliliit na mga containers, maybe one avocado per container. And every time nakakain kayo, kukuha lang kayo ng isa. Ipapato para wag na itong maging matigas. And then, you can consume that. Kasi kung lalagay mo sa isang malaking sisidlan, every time you eat a little, kailangan and then ibabalik naman, parang hindi na maganda. But if you will put it in small batches, every time you need, kumuha lang kayo. So, in general, kung walang contraindication for very high potassium, in general, maybe 90 to 99% of people can accommodate two avocados in a day. Olive oil, olive oil, or olives mismo. If you're living in countries na merong fresh olives or olives na nasa serve, na whole na olive fruit, so you can have that. And fatty fish. Pinaka, um, I think most, one of the most uh, popular na fatty fish would be salmon. But yung salmon, hindi yan local sa Philippines. Meron, merong isang salmon na parang Philippine, Philippine version. Maliliit, yung ganito ka liit lang. Yung tawag yan sa Ilongo is salmonite. So it's like little salmon. And it's also, it looks like salmon at nag-orange din yung kapag pinipito mo. So I think it's really come from uh, the same lineage ng salmon. But the other fatty fishes na available sa Pilipinas, yung tuloy o yung ginagawang sardines na isda, those are the ones that you can have. It's also very high in omega-3 um, bangus if it's wild caught. Although ngayon daw yung sinasabi nila, yung mga farm na magbangus is also, can be also embedded with omega-6. So gusto natin yung mataas sa omega-3, yung mga dilis, yung mga maliliit na 
is that those can also be high in um, omega-3. So, yung sardines, anchovies, and herrings, yon, yung family nila yon, those are good in natural and healthy unsaturated fats. So avocado, olive oil, fatty fish. So if you can take two avocados in a day and then maybe one, two tablespoon of extra virgin olive oil, ilalagay nyo lang sa inyong salad, you can, already in, you can already get your needed healthy unsaturated fats for increasing your HDL. Makaka-increase siya ng HDL. And also, it will help you get your extra calories, but it can be converted into energy, easily convertible into energy. So that's the three. Third step natin sa ating pagpa-lower ng ating HDL. Number four, this is not a very common suggestion, but there are studies showing the intake of psyllium husk powder. Psyllium husk is like a full fiber na ginagawang supplement ng iba for low-carb baking. Ito ang magiging thickener para siyang magiging cornstarch or pampalapot. And for others, it's usually used for a stool bulking agents para mas makakapupo. And I think marami sa low-carbers na nagkaroon din ng ganong problema when they want to have bowel movement pero nahihirapan sila. So one to two tablespoon a day. Isang tablespoon yan, you can mix it with your food. I suggest you mix it with your food like sa inyong ulam kasi magiging malapot yan. If you will put it in your drinks like sa kape, parang hindi siguro maganda, no? Yung lasa na medyo slimy. But other can just take it so maybe in your lemon water or others or tea pwede nyo lagyan if you're okay with it but I think the most natural kung lalagyan nyo ng psyllium husk for me would be bone broth so magpakulo ng mga buto-buto and then you can add psyllium husk powder with that so it's high in collagen and it's going to be also high in fiber na which uh, those studies are showing to lower down the LDL production because this psyllium husk, yung isang paraan nito is it will be fermented. Ito ay kakainin ng ating mga gut bacteria. So it's also going to be very good for our gut and it's going to produce yung mga short chain fatty acids that are easily converted into energy. Madali sila. So when you are already fat adapted, yung ginagamit ating energy is not solely dependent on glucose. Gumagamit na tayo ng energy for our for our uh our Oy, na-mute pala. Na-mute. Sorry. So, our fifth, our fifth option on how to lower a very high, uh, our very high LDL is to spend the extra energy that we have. So, yon. So, yung extra energy na yon, we can have it through physical exercise, but we can also make use of mental exercise. So, kailangan natin gamitin yung ating isipan, ang ating pag-iisip, in, in order for us to make use of those extra LDL, kasi yung very, very high LDL is just extra energy na kailangan natin magamit. So, two ways. Our brain can make use of ketones, magagamit yan, and it will never be activated kung hindi natin yan gagamitin. So, think of a project other than crossword puzzle, yung mga sudoku, and other mental exercises. I'd rather want you to have a practical kind of usage ng inyong uh, energy. So, mentally, it's so nice to to be active. So, mag-isip kung meron kayong mga projects na gusto nyo nang, matagal nyo nang uh, pinuput on hold. This is the best time to do that. If you, that is 
a very good kind of stress because it's going to be productive, okay? And physical exercise, of course, you can do resistance training, you can do some cardio, and you can do some weightlifting. And maganda din if you can uh, mix and match those. So maybe two to three times a week cardio and maybe three to four times a week resistance training or weightlifting. Those are the things that you can do to lower down a very, very high LDL, okay? This is usually what I suggest in patients and I hope... You can do this also para huwag kayong pagalitan ng inyong cardiologist at hindi rin kayo matakot. Hindi tayo matatakot na sobrang taas yung LDL natin as much as we are not afraid of a little high than normal LDL but very, very high LDL times 3 times 5 the normal is also not very good. So, stay low carb again, moderate to high protein, yun yung number one, taasan yung protein intake natin, maybe at minimum nasa half kilo for those 70 kilograms or more, halos nasa one kilo of lean meat or fish yung pwede niyong kainan in a day, decrease your saturated fat intake, if napapasobra yung intake niyo, try to do a food log and food inventory, yun yung tinatawag natin, make a food list na i-inventory niyo kung yung, yung kinakain, baka napapasobra kayo sa mga creams, cheeses, beef, fat, pork fat, coconut oil. And if you eat the, these beef and pork on the lean part lang. That's why we have to increase our protein intake. If you have to eat fats, choose the healthy unsaturated fats. Yung pinaka common would be avocado, olive oil, fatty fish. And this is a special addition that you can do psyllium husk powder or psyllium husk na raw. You can have one to three tablespoon a day. Uh, you can take it as is, pero baka magulunan kayo kasi magiging very sticky and in your throat. So better to mix it a little with water and before you take it. Wala naman siyang lasa. It can just have that parang grainy na, na uh, ano, grainy scent. And of course, lastly, you can spend that energy, that extra energy sa katawan nyo for you to burn it either through physical exercise and or mental exercise with a very good project that can make you very productive. One way that you can do is to read. So if you want to know more, you can read more on low-carb nutrition, on ketogenic diet, on the benefits of fasting. Maganda yan. And for you to be also a one of the influencers in your own community to help others improve their current status. Okay? So wala na dito yung usual typical advices na avoid fructose, avoid yung mga too much glucose, mga starch because it's already under low carb. So yun na yung number one natin. Stay low carb and everything else. These are our typical top five, my five advices for those who want to lower down their very, very high LDL. So next week, magsisimula na yung ating series of live episodes for our National Low Carb Day 2023. I hope to see you on October 1, Sunday final na venue will be announced soon. I hope to see you all there. Maraming maraming salamat everyone. Always remember to stay low carb so that we all stay safe. That's our topic for today. I hope you now know how to lower a very high LDL in five ways. Maraming salamat. Bye!